Hi guys, in this tutorial video, I will show you how you can save players' progress uh, as they play the game, leave the game, and return to the game later. They'll be able to load their previous progress and uh, continue from that point on. So here's an example game, which is a simple cell eater game that looks something like this. So you move your unit, and you can move around and eat these star-like shaped figures. And you can see that the point is going up. So it's at 220, now at 230, and so on. Now, if I'm supposed to refresh the page, um, what will happen is that I'm going to lose all my progress. So if you take a look, now I'm back to point 100, and I have to start over again. So. If you wanted to save the progress, uh, it's actually a really simple process. All you got to do is go to scripts and um, you need to go to, well, there's two different steps to this, right? So first, uh, you need to save the user's progress and you also need to load the user's progress when the player joins. So let's first save the user's progress when the, the player leaves the game. So we're gonna go look into player leave um, script, which gets triggered when the player leaves the game. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an action and then we're gonna save the player data. And we're gonna save the player data of the, the triggering player. And I gotta make sure that this stays in the top. And then we are also going to save the, the unit data for the player. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through all the units owned by the player. And I'm going to save the unit data of the selected unit because we're looping through all the units owned by the triggering player. So yeah, we're going to save the player data and then we're going to save the unit data. And then we're going to destroy the selected unit once it is saved. And then now the second step here is to load the player data. So when player joins the game right now, what we're doing is we're creating a cell unit and then we're giving the cell unit an item. And then uh, we're assigning the, the unit to the player and then we're gonna track the unit with the player's camera. So we're gonna add a new step and it's the load player data. So first of all, we're gonna load the player data of the triggering unit. And then uh, we're also going to load the unit data. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we are going to load the unit data and then apply that to the last unit that was created, which is this one right here. Okay, so um, now for this particular game, we're not, we don't really have to save the unit data because the only thing that we are really tracking here is the, the player points, which is in the bottom right. This is our player attribute. So we're not really saving anything about the unit. So we don't really have to um, store the unit data for this particular example. So we, I can actually disable this. And same here, we don't really have to save the unit data. I'm gonna disable that too. And I'm going to go ahead and save the game and publish it again. And let's play it. All right, so the player has 200 points and we're gonna go ahead and eat some stars. So now we have 250, right? And we're gonna refresh the page now. And let's see if the player data has uh, been saved. And as you can see, now we're starting off from the 250. So there's a lot of things you can do with this game. Uh, a good example of a game that uses this technique uh, on mod.io is, uh, let me see. So techon.io actually uh, does this really well. I mean, it's made by me, so I'm kind of complimenting myself. But what it does is that, well, I'm sure some of you guys already played this game. So the goal of the game is for you to uh, move around. Let's say you go to a dojo and you can actually train your unit and then you can see there's different unit attributes in the bottom. So we have punch experience, kick experience and block experience. 
And these things can be trained by just sitting in this uh, area, and then you can see your punch experience slowly going up. So this is a unit data. So you do need to save the unit data in this game, and you can also save the player data. So both data uh, is being saved um, for this particular game. And again, if you were to refresh the page and load it again, then you can see that your progress has already been saved. So this allows you to make different kinds of games that require um, persistent data, such as uh, MMORPG games or um, some sort of idle games like this. So this should open doors into different types of games that you can make. So I would love to see uh, the kind of games that you'll come up with. So thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next episode.